Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Maximus. This is video five, and today we are talking about envelopes and the look ahead section. So let's go to a default patch and make sure everything is reset, and let's see if we have signal going through the compressor. All right, looks like we are good here. So first things first, we have attack, release, sustain, and release two. So the first two knobs, attack and release. So attack is gonna be the time it takes for the compressor to act once it has heard the signal. And release is gonna be the time it takes to release compression. So let's go over here to our mid and let's kind of take a look at that here and make sure we have this, this white squiggly line that we talked about in the last one selected because this is gonna show the envelope of the, uh, of the uh, envelope. Yeah, the, the curve of the envelope. So let's get some compression going on here. Let's drag this down over here. So we see these lines here, right here. So this is going to be the envelope, what's going to be corresponding to our knobs here. So if we have our attack pretty long, we can see how, how curvy these lines are going to be. So it's going to take a longer time for the compression to actually start. Now, the, the reverse is also true with our release knob here. It's going to be how long it takes for the compressor to disengage. So by default, it's going to be 85.53 milliseconds. And as we increase that, we can see how we see a drastically different curve. Now, really, the release hasn't ended yet until the next beats are coming in and it's compressing and the release still hasn't let go, which isn't generally the right way you'd want to do it for this signal, but it kind of want to show you what's actually happening with these knobs and on the graph that we see here in the center. And if you're familiar with synthesis, this sustain knob is very similar in the sense that once the attack happens, we can have a sustain time until the release happens. So if the release is happening too quick, we can always bring up the sustain. So it waits a little bit and then it enters the release stage. So right now, by default, this, this uh, sustain is going to be five milliseconds. So if we increase this quite a lot here and kind of bring down a release a little bit. These flat lines here is going to be corresponding to the sustain. So pretty drastic here. So what's happening here is these straight lines are going to be waiting 374.16 milliseconds before the release phase can actually begin. So that's definitely something you want to listen to very critically and also watch this graph too because you don't want something sustaining for too long and then the release is too slow and it can't really catch up. The, the envelope should really try to match as much as you can with your input signal. Now the next thing we should talk about too is peak and RMS. So basically the difference is the peak is gonna react really quick to these peaks that you're gonna be seeing here. And the RMS is more so a slower overall bringing up kind of like the meat of your song. So it's kind of suggested maybe for vocals or something like that to go maybe in more individual bands and then use the RMS there and then kind of use peaks on maybe something that's a little bit more quicky, more transienty, more fast, something kind of like that to really catch those peaks and prevent clipping from limiting and stuff like that. So that's kind of the main difference is between peak and RMS. However, it is suggested on the master to kind of keep it on peak, but you can experiment as well if you'd like to, but that's more so a recommendation, kind of a guideline kind of thing. So let's go back to our default and let's also talk about the release too. So if we go to our mid here and let's take a solo here, kind of listen to this again here. Now let's drag our release all the way down and then let's drag our release two all the way up. And let's get some compression going on here. So what we see here, it's basically the same thing as this release knob. However, the curves are gonna be a little bit different. So really what, what we wanna look at here is how this curve ends, how this, this concave, what that looks like there. And then as we make it a little bit longer here, let's get a more of a curve there. Okay, so once we see this right here, now let's turn our release two down and turn our release one back up. And we can see it's a much more linear kind of curve here. It's a different shape. So they basically, in a nutshell, these two release knobs, it's doing the release function as normal. However, the release curve is going to be a little bit changed. And we can also change these curves down here as well. So this curve right here for the, uh, for the first release is the one right below it. And for the second release, there's this curve number here. And this is kind of a thing that you want to listen to definitely with your ears, but also kind of look in the graph and see how the curve looks and how it's changing. So for example, let's turn our first release down all the way and let's turn our second release pretty healthy so we can kind of see what's happening here. Let's get a little bit more compression here. Get a pretty quick attack. Okay. So basically, don't really look at this jagged first line here. Kind of look at more of the release tail. So this is going to be on one right here. So this first curve shape. Now we go all the way up to eight. 
it's going to be a little different here. And these are kind of little subtleties. And these are going to be the ones that you, once you get really familiar with Maximus, you can be like, okay, I like to, I want my release for this one on curve three on a mid band or something like that. You're going to get really kind of geeky at some point with this, uh, with this compressor here. So going back to one here and then going all the way back to eight. And these other values here are basically in between kind of versions. You can always scroll through these and kind of see what each one is doing. And so on and so forth. And you can, this is also kind of interesting, you can also blend release two and release one and have some much different shapes here. So this is kind of more so for your side to start experimenting how you like to maybe mix these release knobs, how you like the curves to be shaped, depending on your signal. So that's something for you to try with your session. And moving on from here, what we should talk about is this look ahead stuff. So let's go back to our default here. So basically look ahead is think of the concept where the signal's coming in and the compressor is compressing the signal. However, the time it takes for the compressor to react isn't always instantaneously as we think. If we add a little bit more look ahead, it's going to give a delay to our plugin. However, it's going to be much more accurate so the compressor knows exactly what's coming up. So it knows exactly how to respond in a much more precise way. And like I said, it's going to add a little bit more delay to the input to the output signal. So always keep that in mind. And once on the master, something also to note is when we increase this attack time, this delay from the look ahead is going to be added to the attack time. And that's going to be the total delay compens or the delay from the input to the output. Hopefully that makes sense. The, uh, the manual also goes over that concept as well. So something to keep in mind. And then below here, this LMH mix, this is going to be what they like to call a New York style compressor, which is basically just parallel compressing where you have a signal that you're compressing, but you also have the dry signal mixed in. So it has a certain kind of tonality. So you can always do maybe like 50, 50 or something like that and kind of get some parallel compression. And to get a good example of that in our presets here, if we go, I think, where is it? Mastering, insert, okay, insert here, New York compression. And now you can see this knob here is kind of at, what is it, 29%. So we can see that we're getting some compression happening. And we can look at all these different bands here and kind of see what's happening. So really not too much on the low, depending on how loud your signal is. On the mid, we have some soft knee right here. And while we're on this, if you ever heard of hard knee and a soft knee, this roundness here is basically what they mean by soft knee. So on the low, how this is so sharp right here, it's almost like it's one point from a change from a diagonal line to a horizontal line. That's going to be a sharp hard knee. However, over here on mid, this curve here is going to be a soft knee. So it's going to be a more gentle approach from the input signal getting compressed there. So I thought I'd mention that while we were on the topic right here as well. And while we're looking at presets, there's also something that I did want to bring up as well. So Sound Goodizer is based upon Maximus. So the knob that we like to put sometimes on our master, we've all been guilty of it. Maybe we've put five or six, who knows? I'm not judging anybody. However, we can always go into Maximus and there's a section here called Sound Goodizer Presets, A, B, C, and D. So we can hop into A and see exactly what's happening. And now that we're kind of familiar with these controls, we can see really what's happening to our low end. So we look at our low and say, okay, so this was pulled up here. So we have a little expansion going here. This is going to be hard limited right over here. Let's look at our mid band here. Now we have a soft knee like we just talked about. And then this is not necessarily limiting, but it is a pretty steep, uh, steep ratio. And then we have high. And then we can see some expanding is going on here. So we can see that the lows and the highs are expanding. So they're bringing the lows and the highs up. And then over here on the master, we have a little bit of compression with a little tension right over here. And then we can also look at all the different en envelopes here as well. So now knowing what we know now, we can go into these presets here, the ones that maybe we like, or we might like B better, something like that. And we can kind of see what's going on here. Not too much here that's going on B, which is kind of interesting as far as the graph goes, but we do have some saturation and so on and so forth. And we can go over to C and see what's happening over here. We can see even where the bands are split, which is kind of interesting. So this is 200, almost 2K right there. So something I thought I'd mention as well that we can kind of know what Know, know what we're doing and we can let's say we like c or we like a we can go into that and further tweak it now knowing what we know and make it even better and make sound gooder eyes sound good eyes or sound gooder i guess so yeah that's basically that in a nutshell so hopefully you learned something with this section here highly recommend to play around with the different curves here and see what fits best for your song and also play around with the release two and release one that's a lot of fun kind of mixing the two in between 
And yeah, that's pretty much, I think, covers this video. In the next one, we're going to be talking about the menu over here and these different kind of stuff here, because this is a more complicated topic, and I kind of want to spend the right amount of time going over these. And the last thing before we leave here, I did want to mention that I didn't in the previous videos, we have a nice little low cut here as well. So if we went back to our default here and we have our bands here and we're, you know, we're tying in our lows and our highs, we can also dial in the low cut, which is very convenient. And we can always go maybe to 30 hertz or however much you want. We have a max of 80 hertz and the minimum is going to be off. If you don't want any low cut, you don't necessarily need that. So yeah, I thought I'd mention that before we leave you here and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.